President Trump, he doesn't want to let certain countries into the United States. Do you feel that he is wrong in doing this? Well, I don't believe that he believes that. I mean, I think the whole concept of the, the United States, everyone says it's an idea, not just a country. And it was an idea built on diversity. It was built by people who've come from all sorts, all parts of the world. And, and the um, mentality of openness and uh, embracing and integration of other uh, people is part of the mindset of all Americans and it's part of the culture. And I don't think that that's something that can be reversed. And so I think that the majority of Americans understand that diversity is enriching and that there's so much to gain from taking people in. And, and again, it's the um, politics of fear that we really need to um, put to one side because I think any country, you know, we live in an economy where sound ideas are the most valuable asset. And, um, and you need to attract the best of the ideas and the best of talent, no matter where it comes from. And being open to that is always going to give a, 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 an economy and a country an edge. Shunning people away based on their nationality or, or their background is, is something that will only hurt uh, the country. And, 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 I understand, and I know that President Trump is very focused on uh, the economy and on making uh, lives better for all Americans, and I think Part and parcel of that is embracing talent wherever it comes from. But he also, Your Majesty, he's announced the potential decision to withhold funds from Palestinian refugees. Are you worried by that? Yes, and we're talking uh, to them about that because, um, you know, uh, UNRWA is a very important organization and I think uh, cutting the um, aid that goes uh, to them will have a devastating impact on many uh, Palestinians, including hundreds of thousands of children who attend UNRWA schools. Um, you know, UNRWA is a lifeline for uh, Palestinian refugees, and there are over 5 million of them. 40% are uh, living in Jordan, and they rely on the organization for vital services, including health, education, etc., and assistance. And so we feel that the mandate, their mandate should not end until there has been a resolution to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and the, Palestinian of a, the establishment of a Palestinian state. Only then will their mandate end. And that is a day that we look forward to. In the meantime, it's very important to build trust with both sides, with both the Palestinians and the Israelis, so that the, the United States can be perceived as the honest broker that's going to deliver on a tangible outcome in this regard. And I feel that uh, you know, cutting funds to UNRWA will send the wrong signal at this stage. And let's, let us not forget that the US has been very generous in supporting, and they have been uh, some of the largest contributors to Palestinian refugees. So that is something we really appreciate, and we hope that that will continue so that we can really have the right kind of healthy atmosphere to build trust between both parties and really take us to that outcome to end this decades-long conflict that has crippled our region for way too long. But Your Majesty, when you hear about decisions like this and other decisions you were talking about solving the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and when the, the administration announces the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem, do you feel that he understands the region? Well, you know, I think that um, Speaking from the Jordanian perspective, our relationship with the United States is very historic and deep and, and goes beyond one uh, particular issue or decision. Um, when it comes to the uh, embassy, that was, a, we felt, a decision that, again, it's all about sending the right kind of signals. And um, it, in moving the embassy uh, to Jerusalem, that prejudges the status of Jerusalem, which the UN resolutions and international law state that should, should come within the context of a comprehensive peace with the Israelis and Palestinians and the establishment of a Palestinian state. So that prejudges the status. And, um, and it also renders the United States a bias broker, and that's not the kind of perception we want to create uh, when we're trying to work towards a, a, a final status solution. And as you saw, it also stoked a lot of tensions, not only in the Arab world, but also internationally. Uh, so we need to go back to the building of the trust. You know, Jerusalem should be a, a city of hope uh, for everyone. It is a symbol of peace for, uh, for Muslims, Christians, and Jews alike. And we've had the leaders of Christian churches come to us and, and express their um, uh, worry about what's going on because 
no single country should really have ownership of this, this city that symbolizes so much for humanity and it goes beyond politics. And so um, I hope that we can get beyond this decision and really move to the issues that are important and that is really the establishment of a Palestinian state uh, with East Jerusalem as the capital and reach, reaching a final status solution on all the pending issues. Hi, I'm Tanya Bryant and thank you for watching CNBC Conversation. If you want to watch another episode, just click on the videos. And don't forget to subscribe to CNBC Life for the very best in feature programming. Thank you so much for watching.